Well, are you are you with a? I'm, I'm with a dot com here. We do a sports website, and we're covering the Big Twelve. Okay. So I just wanted right. to visit with you. Um, Brian Houston with Rattling Hum Sports, and we're talking to Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby. And uh, yesterday you had some uh, pretty strong comments about uh, the relationship between the Big 12 and, and the NCAA and your thoughts about uh, what the role of the NCAA should be at this point. Well, the NCAA is us. I mean, it's comprised of members, and whatever shape we're currently in is not due to the leadership of the NCAA. It's due to the... Uh, the way that institutions have voted and the layers that have been built on and you know I, I in large measure I don't know that we've done as good a job of looking at today's problems in light of modern circumstances as as we need to and and I think we'll um, that's that's really what I was talking about yesterday is we need to we need to think innovatively about how we uh, how we deal with today's student athletes and coaches and the athletic environment what kind of changes do you have in mind well, I don't know that I have any any magic solutions for any of it. I I certainly don't think I do. I I think I have some ideas of areas where we ought to be uh, uh, thinking innovatively uh, in the recruiting environment. Is certainly uh, uh, the way we communicate, the way we travel, and the and the way we make decisions is very different today than it was 30 years ago when many of these rules were put in place. Um, I, I think that uh, there are other. Uh, rules that uh, are currently in place that uh, probably uh, the large schools with the more resources would think about um, changing. Uh, as an example, uh, some of the, the supplemental uh, uh, support uh, funding payments and issues that go along with those uh, would be a, a good example, an easy example of that. But, uh, you know, I, I think we just need to delve into the rule book, and there's been a significant uh, initiative to um, – to deregulate, and that works well in some areas, and, and there are some other areas of the rule book where deregulation doesn't work at all. So, Are you comfortable with their investigation process when they've had the issues they've had with some of the investigation problems that they've had, and, then, and yet they would be the determining factor in enforcing rules violations against schools like, say, Oregon and places like that where it didn't seem like the, the penalties were very severe despite what looked like pretty serious crimes? Well, the infractions committee is comprised of representatives of the members there there are no NCA staff members on there so uh, whatever outcomes we have are the best judgments of the people that populate that committee and um, they're in in many ways they're they're overrun with uh, with responsibilities and and without the weight of perjury or the uh, the power of subpoena uh, it's difficult for them to get to the bottom of, of uh, a lot of these matters. And so um, I don't presume to know the the uh, inside information on uh, what anybody did or didn't do, but I know they have a very difficult task, and I think in large measure they aren't armed with the tools that it takes to, to um, uh, fully prosecute those cases. I know you also mentioned uh, the idea of the, the bigger schools separating again from the smaller schools, getting to more of the, the super conference. So what are your thoughts on that? What would you like to see happen? Uh, well, I don't know exactly how that fits together, but um, I, I do know that there are 350 schools in Division One, and, and from the biggest and broadest to the smallest and tiniest, uh, they, there are not a lot of similarities. And so... Uh, it's hard to paint 350 schools with a broad brush uh, from a rules standpoint, and uh, as a result of that, I think there are some built-in challenges. And so um, uh, perhaps some sort of smaller configuration uh, would uh, would solve some of those problems. Uh, you know, you just never know on those things until you start digging into them. But uh, I, I think it's a concept uh, worth considering. And compared to last year, how do you feel about the health of the Big 12 overall? Well, I felt good about the health of the Big 12 last year, but that wasn't the public perception uh, that that we were in a healthy state. I, I think this year it's obvious we're we're strong, we're successful, and we're stable. And um, there's great balance in our league. We're just about to embark upon a, a new set of bowl agreements, and we've got uh, some terrific television agreements in place. And uh, our membership is stable, and and I feel very good about the future of the conference. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Very good to see you.